All right. Hello, I'm Michael Finn, holistic exercise and lifestyle coach. And tonight is kind of like part two of holistic health codes zero. So I did part one a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to touch base on a couple of things that I covered then um, right here in the beginning. But that one is also, um, well, it's up on YouTube and I sent out a link if you don't have it or you can't find it, don't hesitate to shoot me an email and I will send you a direct link to it. Um, or if you're an active client with me, I can um, directly send it right to your dashboard and that sort of thing as well. So, but all of the holistic health codes are the things that I have found over the last 20 plus years that help my clients achieve their results and their goals and their dreams and their legacies and everything else so much faster. So when they get all of these different things implemented into their life, and this is all about life. So it does take time. It's not something that we can race through or anything like that. And it's always a work in progress. I continue to work on mine all of the time. And that way I continue to uh, reach new dreams and new goals and find new happiness in every single day. So that's kind of what it's all about. And so here's just a few little results of different clients that I've worked with, whether it's weight loss, whether it's just being strong as you get older, whether it's playing your sport or your activity or finding peace in your life or anything along those lines. The holistic health codes basically you work for every single goal and every single dream because you end up tailoring them to work the best with you. And that's kind of how it all kind of plays out. So, and um, also, uh, this is something that I went over uh, in the first part, and I will just briefly touch on it. But, you know, our health code zero is our love, our desire, our passion, our dream, our legacy, whatever you want to call it, whatever word really or even phrase resonates with you. And that's where I kind of went over this whole like love code that I learned, you know, a long time ago, which you can listen to in the past um, health code zero. And... Um, you need to find what's really going to spark your energy and your passion and your love and dream to reach your legacy so that you have motivation to make the choices and to make the changes and to go after your dreams. So anytime you look at somebody that is successful in the world, they're successful because they took the time, they spent the energy, they did the work. And they worked hard to make the changes they needed to make that took them towards their dreams and their goals. That's what it all basically comes down to. So, and this doesn't necessarily mean that you might think that, you know, your life is really easy or that it's, you know, not busy or something like that. In all reality, when you are going after your dreams and your goals, you're busy all the time because you're focused on your dreams and your goals. And so there's no real dull moment. You're always like in that focus of, you know, oh yeah, you know, I need to be working on feeding myself really well. So I have all the energy to do all the things that I need to do. And I need to follow my schedule and stay on track with, you know, completing particular projects so that I can, you know, reach my dream and goal, whatever it might particularly be. So sometimes people will say, you know, oh, yeah, you know, well, I feel really busy. And it's like, going, yeah, well, that's because you're going after your dreams and goals. So people that aren't going after their dreams and goals are typically, you know, sitting there watching other people go after their dreams and goals. And they're just sitting there on the sidelines you know, not doing a whole lot, but at the end of the day, they're kind of sitting there going, you know, well, what did I do all day? Whereas the people that are going after their dreams and goals are going, you know, all right, cool. I got a lot accomplished today and I got a whole lot more to do tomorrow. 
So lots of times people, you know, come to me and say, you know, wow, you know, you do a lot and you're doing a lot of different things. And it's like, yep, that's my dream. That's my goal. I've got lots of things on my list to do. So when we are following our dream goal, passions, legacy, we need to focus on what oftentimes is referred to as our I-ness. Um, and I refer to it as our I love or loving yourself. And we need to do this first. So I know it might sound kind of weird, but we need to focus on making sure to take care of ourselves first. Because if we're taking care of ourselves and we have plenty of energy and um, we're doing all the things that we need to do to care for ourselves, we'll be in a better mood. Um, we will be calmer. We'll have more energy to deal with all of the other relationships and everything else in our life. And so we always need to focus on the fact that we are taking care of ourselves first and foremost before anything else. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't take care of everybody else too. I mean, when I first get up in the morning, yes, um, I'll get to this, but you know, I'll do my little mantras. I'm making the bed and stuff like that, but then I'm immediately downstairs and making breakfast for my son and lunch and getting him ready so that um, he's off and to go to school. But in all reality, he is part of my dream and my goal. So he fits into that big puzzle. He is a piece in it. And so it's important to me that I do those things for him and I provide those things for him. And I spend um, that time in the morning and time in the morning, even talking to him and getting him ready for the day and things like that. And some of that's because I didn't have that as a child and I don't want him to go through that same process. So I felt like I ended up going through my childhood without really a whole lot of mentorship. And um, I did in some ways, but you know, not in the way that I would have really liked. And so I try to, part of my dream and goal is being a little bit more of that mentor and example of how you can be happy and healthy and live your dreams and do all the things that you want to do. So then after you're really good at taking care of your eye, and in a future one, I'll show you this in a tree. I really liked um, Paul Check did this kind of example in a tree where the eye are the roots of the tree. The we is the trunk of the tree. So our we love is like you know, any basically any relationship. It doesn't have to be a uh, a spousal relationship or a partner relationship. It can be the relationship with your boss. It can be the relationship with your neighbor. It can be the relationship with your best friend. It can be, you know, a relationship with a teammate, anything like that. It's just basically a relationship between two people. And with our we relationships, both people need to be putting in 100%. And this is where I will get into more of this over the course of this year on focusing on how we need to spend more time in the we relationships that are working for us and less time in the we relationships that aren't working for us. And that way, once again, it will bring us more happiness and we will be more comfortable and we will feel more fulfilled in our life. And so that's why I spend more time with certain people in my life and less time with other people in my life because uh, the we relationships that I have where I feel that both sides of the program are putting in 100%, I'm going to spend more time with those. And other um, aspects, it's not necessarily the case. So... Um, except for my clientele, because my clientele, I put in 100%, no matter how much effort they're putting in. I always hope for them to put 100% in, but especially initially, even if it's only 10%, it's better than nothing at all, and I go with it. All right, so then we have the all relationships, and that's where it's all inclusive, where it's your entire family, whether it is your entire neighborhood, whether it is a club you belong to or a team you belong to or anything like that, it's more of an all relationship. So, um, and I went over all this too in the first one, but I wanted to slow down just a little bit to cover all this too, so that we're all very clear that it's an all. 
Um, and a business, if you have a business, that can be an all relationship um, as well. Um, because once again, it's going to encompass everybody. And therefore, um, everybody kind of needs to be on the first on the same page. But once again, going back real quick, if you aren't taking care of your I, your we relationships are going to suffer and your all relationships are going to suffer too. They're all going to be more challenging if you are not taking care of your I. So you have to be the one spot on to take care of you first and make sure that you have your balance under control and that will help all of your we and your all relationships play out much better as well as you will be able to recognize the we and the all relationships that you want to maintain and stay in. So, all right. So goals and dreams, um, very, 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 very important to come up with um, your goals and your dreams and what's really important to you. Um, or a legacy, or what you want to create. We are here on this planet to experience things and to live a life. And we all should really enjoy that life. And so, um, and so I covered this in the last one too. You know, even if your dream and goal is on the fear side of like avoiding becoming really uh, sick and dependent and being in an assisted living facility or something along those lines, that's okay too. Um, but primarily, you know, we want to try to come up with, you know, what do you want your life to really be? Um, there's lots of good, uh, speakers out there that, you know, talk about different situations where, you know, they had somebody and all they really did was they just thought about, you know, well, what would the future me do? And that's kind of, you know, a big part of it. And then you need to write that dream goal, passion, legacy down and, um, and then even make a slogan or something like that and plaster it all over the place so that you see it and you say it all the time and you remind yourself all the time. I have mine on my shirt and my sweatshirts um, that I wear quite frequently. And so on the front of my shirt, it says, happy, healthy, fit, fast. So, and that reminds me of primarily more of my I dreams and goals but also what I want to represent and the example that I want to set that no matter what age I am at, because I turned 54 this year, I am still a happy person. I'm still a healthy person. I am still fit. And I'm not as fast as it was when I was in my 20s, but I'm still pretty darn fast for in my 50s. So, and that's why I primarily throw the fat last one in there because that is part of my dream that makes me feel alive when I'm sprinting um, and I feel the wind passing over my body. I don't even feel like I'm on the planet anymore. I feel like I'm just floating. So, and then on the back of my shirts, I have the phrase, are you fit to live the life that you love? So, and that is something that I ask myself every day making sure that I am taking care of myself, I'm taking care of my we relationships, and I'm taking care of my all relationships the best that I possibly can, that I know how today doesn't mean that I can't do better in the future, but I'm doing the best that I can today with what I have the uh, ability to do um, so that I live the happy, healthy, fit life that I want to live. And so I wanna make sure Am I uh, fit enough to live that life? So, and then, so it's on my shirts, it's on uh, my walls in places, it's on my computer screen, it's, you know, everywhere. And I remind myself every day. So when I get up in the morning and I'm getting uh, dressed in the morning and I'm making the bed and stuff like that, I'm actually saying my mantras in my head and reminding myself of, you know, why I'm here and what I'm doing and what I really want to accomplish um, as I am going after my dreams and my goals. 
So come up with your own little cheer or slogan or mantra or whatever you want to call it and make sure that you speak it either out loud or in your head to yourself every day, all the time, first thing in the morning, as frequently as you possibly can so that you remind yourself of what you are trying to go after and that you're always thinking about, you know, what would my future self do? So, and it doesn't mean that you're going to come up with this right off the bat. I didn't come up with mine right off the bat. Um, I really should try to go back and find out what I first wrote down because the only word that's probably in there that's still in there is fast. <laughs> the others have probably completely changed. So, but, you know, really focus on reminding yourself of that every day because we are on this beautiful world together. And, you know, so many people talk about, you know, you know, I don't know, going to heaven or going to hell. Well, we can make heaven and hell right here on earth. So you can make a beautiful world and a beautiful life that, you know, you really love. Or you can make a really miserable, hellish life that you don't love. Um, and that's one of the parts that we are going to get into um, tonight. So um, fine tune your um your goals and dreams by and this is something that i talked about in the last one too is every day at the end of the day and this is a great practice to get into is you want to write down one to three things that you are happy about the day and it can be like the same thing every day if you want to i mean it can just simply be you know hey i made the bed this morning you know that's fine that's great Whatever one thing is every day that makes you happy, write that down at the end of the every day. So, and remind yourself. And the same thing with one to three things that you are grateful about. You know, I have a home or, you know, I have a pet or, you know, my plant grew a new blossom today or the sun was out or whatever it could be. It can be simple things. It can be big things, but just what are you grateful for? You know, what are you super happy for and are thankful that is, you know, in your life? So um, to remind ourselves that in a lot of cases, people sometimes I think forget that, you know, a lot of the simple things in life are really, really important. So I've had challenging times in my life when I didn't have a whole lot. And so um, having a lot isn't really that important to me, but um, having what I really need is very important to me. So having a roof over my head and having good food and having clean water and having a place to, you know, lay and enjoy some sun and um, a family to spend time with and all that sort of thing is, you know, incredibly important. So, and I'm grateful for that, you know, every, every single day. And then the last thing, um, I typically tell people to just do one of these and not three, but it's okay to do three if you think you're up for the challenge, but writing down one to three things that you want to be different, or you would like to change, or you would like to work on, or what have you, but something that you're not necessarily super happy with at the particular moment, and don't make it to where it's got to be a big negative, just be aware of it and go, oh yeah, you know, not really super happy with this situation, or not super happy with myself today because I blew off this and I did something else instead. So whatever it may be, just put something down because especially if you see that same thing popping up over and over and over and over, it's causing you stress. And therefore it's something that if you truly want to be happier and healthier and fitter, it's something that you need to address and that you need to come up with a plan. And if it's hard for you to come up with a plan, that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Have a conversation with me. Let's see if we can come up with a way to resolve it um, and things like that. I'm a great listener. I'm a great sounding board. It's what I do with my clients all day long, whether I'm doing massage or exercise. We talk about stuff and, you know, most people say, you know, they feel better when they leave. So, all right. So getting on to part two of holistic health codes zero and it's zero because it comes first 
and foremost before anything else is choices. We all have choices to make every day. And those choices can make our life feel better or our, and take us closer to our goals or those choices can make us feel worse and take us farther from our goals. And that's why we need to take the time to stop and take a few minutes and make sure that we are making the choices that are going to help us move closer to our goals more often than the choices that we move farther away from our goals. Now, one thing, I was going to put a little slide together for this, but I didn't. Um, one thing that I really liked, um, Paul Check um, used this phrase, and people have kind of tweaked it in other ways too, but I kind of really like um, the way that Paul Check put it. But when we're under stress, we our body doesn't want to expend energy in any way. So it always wants to do something that it's done before. And so it's going to be more likely to go towards something that you've done in the past. And it's not going to want to make a change because change takes energy. And so, um, so his little analogy to get this, to get people to remind it was when you're running from a lion to save your life, it's a bad time to throw in a cartwheel. So, because if you do a cartwheel, even if you're pretty good at cartwheels, it's really going to slow you down and possibly you're going to get eaten by the lion. So, and if you're really bad at cartwheels, like I am, um, you are most likely going to fall and completely stop and once again, get eaten by the lion. So when people are under stress, they typically go back to the choices that they've been doing, you know, regularly. And so we need to uh, be aware. And that's why we also need to make sure that we stop for a few seconds and think about, okay, am I just going back to this choice because I'm under stress and I'm avoiding, you know, the choices that I really need to be making or what's going on, but we need to have that awareness, excuse me, um, that um, we are trying to make better choices to accomplish and move closer to our goals and dreams. And one other little part that I'll throw in here really quick is that um, in all reality, we never actually really reach our goals or dreams. They just continue to keep growing and changing and moving. So it's more about the day-to-day -day thing of going, you know, hey, I'm, you know, getting closer to it. And that's why setting little like journey goals or transition goals or, um, you know, I got to this point, you know, I'm, you know, my business is earning a hundred thousand dollars a year now and, you know, where it was only doing $80,000 a year, whatever. Um, it doesn't mean that you, you know, reached your ultimate goal of maybe say making a half million dollars a year, but you're closer and you set a smaller goal to reach out and accomplish. And so that's always kind of the part of it is, you know, putting up little goals to get you towards that big goal. But the first thing is coming up with that big one. So we all have three choices to make in every situation. So the first one is the optimal choice. And the optimal choice is the one that is best for you and everybody kind of on your whole dream team. So everybody that supports you and that's around you and things like that, that would be our optimal choice. All right. And it's going to help you get closer to your goals, dreams, and legacies and typically not pull you away from it. So, and typically when you make that choice and after you follow through with that choice, typically you feel a whole lot better. So simply just because the fact that you'll go, oh yeah, I'm really happy that I made that choice and I did that and I feel really great now. So it will give you a big energy boost. The second one is a suboptimal choice. And that one is typically um, used when people want short-term gratification and or they are under a lot of stress. And so it isn't optimal and therefore it typically detracts you from your goals and gives you a little setback. And so we have to be careful of these 
um, to make sure that these aren't piling up in your life and that you're picking the suboptimal goal all the time because it's going to be really hard to um, make those choices um, and continue to move towards your goal if you're picking the suboptimal choice. Um, I don't know if I have a super good example. We'll use we'll use a food example. So, um, you know, if you're really trying to eat super clean and being really healthy, and instead of you know going home and having the food that you had prepared the day before, you end up stopping off on the way home and picking up fast food because you're like going, ah, I don't even feel like you know warming up what I had in the fridge or something like that. So. Um, those are the things that, you know, we need to be careful of. And so a lot of times when people are already making a lot of suboptimal choices, in all reality, I'll just ask them, okay, well, let's just track how many suboptimal choices you're making in a week in a particular area. And if they're making, you know, 10 or 12 in a week or something like that, I'm like, okay, that's fine. No big deal. It's like, can we do less? You know, can we get down to like eight or seven or something like that? Because that's going to be better. So it doesn't mean that you always have to make the optimal choice. It just means that you need to be doing better than what you're currently doing, and that is going to move your progress more forward. And then our third choice is the choice to do nothing. And when we choose to do nothing, the ideal thing to be doing is to be focusing on getting the education and the knowledge and the research so that you can make the optimal choice or a suboptimal choice. So um, unfortunately, some people do the nothing, do the do nothing choice of just ignoring it and hoping that it's going to go away um, or just being completely apathetic and not, you know, really caring what's going on. But that doesn't really help the situation either. So uh, it's always good if you're struggling in particular areas to, you know, do some research or ask a question or find out what other people do in that situation and then try to make a decision from there and then make a choice and then see what happens. So, and that way you can make a better educated guess on uh, which choice to actually make in your life. So, um, options in the other holistic health code so like in health code one which is all about eating you know real food you know it's you know optimal choices are eating whole real unprocessed food as opposed to eating processed food and drinking clean water instead of drinking some other thing that humans really aren't supposed to eat since there's no other animal on the planet that drinks anything other than water so that's what we're supposed to be drinking um, going to bed on time, you know, sometime before 10 p.m. preferably, not staying up till one o'clock in the morning, scrolling on your phone. I hear that way too often. Um, you know, this is why I go through all of these, you know, health codes all the time with people. Um, going for a walk out in the fresh air every day, you know, even if it's running. I went out running in the rain on Sunday and Chase and I played basketball in the rain on Sunday. Um, you know, it's one thing if it's a blizzard, you know, okay, well, fine, stay inside. But, you know, a little bit of rain and a little bit of cool weather is not going to hurt you. Um, in fact, it's actually really good for you and really healthy. So getting out in the fresh air or sitting at your desk for a longer period of time, um, you know, that's probably not going to help you feel better. And if you do it for too long a period of time, lots of studies have shown that you're actually less productive. So, um and then taking the time to just stop and breathe and think and process your dreams and goals and your choices. So, you know, or you can just bypass all of that. It doesn't mean that you need to get into some big meditative practice or anything like that. But, um, you know, take the time but when you're out on that walk to breathe and to think. Don't be tied up listening to something else on your phone. Listen to the birds and the air and the wind chimes on people's houses and let the thoughts throw, roll through your head and think about the choices that you're going to make when you get back from your little walk. So, but, you know, be creative for yourself because your choices are going to lead to more energy when you're making more of the 
optimal choices. So when we are making new and different choices, we are going to have to expend energy because we're going to have to stop. If you never do any cooking and you never go to the grocery store and all you ever do is order out for food, well, making the choice to go buy or order or have real food delivered to you is going to make you have to do something different and therefore your patterns are going to change and you're going to have to expend more energy to do it. Um, some people use the analogy of this is like creating a new path and walking through the woods. If there's no trail through the woods and you have to go in there with a machete and cut away a new path, well, that's going to take a whole lot more energy. And even though you do it once, it's still not going to be a very good trail. You're going to have to walk that trail on a regular basis to open it up. The same thing goes in the exercise community as well. Every time you do an exercise, the pathways from the brain to all of the muscles and the connective tissue and the bones and everything else that help you do that exercise will grow wider to perform that activity. So this is why the phrase use it or lose it is so important. So if you quit squatting all the way down to the ground and you just sit in high chairs all the time and ride in a big high car and all that kind of stuff, well, you're going to lose the ability to squat because the pathways to do it are going to get grown over. And you can get it back, but you have to make the choice to challenge yourself and work deeper and deeper and deeper into that squat slowly but surely over time. So, and I've seen this hundreds of times in my work. I have people that come to me that sometimes have difficulty walking or getting up out of chairs or anything else, or, you know, even more challenging things like sprinting. And I can get them back there as long as they take the time to practice. And so we have to practice our choices on a regular basis. So, um, so we're going to work on picking just one, two, or three choices um, to work on and make differently um, each day. And one of the easy little ways that I came up with to figure out something that can help people is I want you to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, one being poor and 10 being great. And don't be negative about yourself and be on the positive side. But off of your own knowledge today, I want you to rate yourself in each one of these categories. So if we talk about food intake, it's like, how well are you really doing? Give yourself you know, a rating, okay? So right now I will give myself a rating of, mm, I'll say eight and a half. So um, it's winter time, I'm having more treats. I'm trying to keep a little extra weight on my body so that I can grow a little bit muscle. And some of the treats I am picking are not quite as good as they could be. So, um, so I'll give myself an eight and a half. And all around, I never give myself a 10. I always think I can do better. Um, the highest score I ever really give myself is a nine or a nine and a half. Um, so, but I know that my nutrition is going to get really good because I just wrote up my whole training schedule for the year. And so pretty much starting this week, my food intake is going to be a nine and a half. So um, hydration, I'm going to give myself a nine and a half because I'm always really good about my water intake. I've got water bottles all over the place and I drink water all the time. Sleep, I'm going to give myself a eight and a half right now because I've kind of been staying up a little bit extra late um, doing a few extra things like putting the slideshow together and stuff like that. And let's see, daily movement. I've been pretty darn good with that. I'm gonna give myself a nine on that one, um, but that will also bounce up to a nine and a half here pretty quick. Um, taking time to breathe daily is definitely a nine and a half. Um, I pretty much have to do that. So, um, because uh, that's what keeps me really going and focused and really wanting to spend the time and energy with all of my clients. When I don't do that, it becomes very difficult. I need to have a little bit of time in my own brain and with my own thoughts on a regular basis. 
And then focusing on goals and choices. So, and I will also give myself a nine and a half on that because I am very, very dialed in on this. I've been doing it for a very long time on focusing on my choices. Um, people always ask me, you know, they'll say, you know, oh, wasn't well, it hard to turn down that pizza? Nope, it's not hard. It's very easy because I know what path that leads me down. And it does not lead me down the path of going after my goals and my dreams. So it's not going to make me feel good. It's not going to make me think better. And it's not going to keep my hormones balanced so that I can help everybody else manage their stress. So it doesn't help. So it's very easy for me to turn down pizza and commercial candy and all this other kind of junk because it doesn't help me live the fit, happy, healthy life that I really want to love. So take a little time real quick, write down a number for each of these. And then what I highly recommend is you take your lowest score and you focus on picking one choice that you're going to make on a regular basis, depending upon what it is, that is going to make that score go up. So we want to continue to maintain. So like if you're a nine in particular areas, well, that's great. Good. We want to maintain those. But if you got lower areas, we want to try to bring them up. So write down one to three choices that you're going to make on a regular basis that are going to lead you closer to your goals, dreams, happiness, and all that sort of good thing. Okay. So, and then my big promise is throughout 2023, I will continue to have Zoom calls and meetings and little things to um, work on with all of you. So um, each and every month, uh, just like this one, where um, I'll give you knowledge and little tools to use, like what I showed you tonight of, you know, rating yourself on a scale of one to 10 and making little choices so that we can dive in deeper and help you move forward towards your true loves and your true dreams and your true passions so that you can also live a happy and healthy life that you really love and really enjoy because that's what it all comes down to. So, and we'll get into all sorts of things like value sets and, um, uh, what is it? Um, psyche and ego and all sorts of fun stuff. So all great things to learn and all great things to understand so that we can have a better understanding of even why we are making the choices that we are making. So, because sometimes it's just, we got to just change the way that we think about things. So hope that was great and hope you all enjoyed all of that. And